In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thomas Rutledge, today as you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and a ghost named Holy, is the day you begin to live forever in the body of Christ. My, what a day, my, what a day. Holy baptism is full initiation says the Book of Common Prayer, by water and the Holy Spirit into Christ's body. And the bond which God establishes in baptism is indissoluble. Now, Thomas, I know that since you are a very bright young man, you will appreciate the words of my favorite theologian, Father E.L. Mascal who said once upon a time, and I quote, becoming a Christian through baptism is an ontological fact resulting from an act of God. The Christian is a person to whom something has happened, something moreover which is irreversible, which penetrates to the very roots of his being, who has been recreated in and unto Christ. It is almost universally assumed today, especially among those who do not know, that becoming a Christian means, in essence, the adoption of a new set of beliefs or the initiation of a new behavior. A Christian would be defined as one who believes in Christ or worships Christ or tries to follow Christ's teachings. It must be pointed out that To define Christianity in terms of either belief or practice involves the neglect of two extremely important principles that are fundamental to all sound theology. The former of these is that the act of God always precedes and is presupposed by the act of man. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he first loved us. Today, not only will you be baptized in the name of the Trinity by the rector who knows how to baptize, but you will be baptized by Father Dow, a baptized E himself, surrounded by a room of the baptized. The prayer book continues, holy baptism is the sacrament by which God adopts us as children and makes us members of Christ's body, the church, and inheritors of the kingdom of God. Until the day of your confirmation, your parents and godparents will celebrate your baptism with you, and most important, they will teach you from this day forward how to live the baptized life. The prayer book continues, the baptized life is affirming our belief in the apostolic faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed and promising with God's help to continue in the Apostles' teachings and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and the prayers to persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord, to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ and to seek and serve Christ in all persons loving your neighbor as yourself, to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. As we all know, and as you will come to know, baptism is not just a quick dip from heaven. It's not just getting little Nellie or little Danny or little Randy done. Baptism is the service not of the naming of a child, 
It is the sacrament of rebirth. The day today you begin to live forever as a member of the body of Christ. Holy baptism is a lifelong process through which we are all transformed in our knowledge of who we are as citizens of the kingdom of God and members of Christ's body, the church. It is the beginning of our Christian life in ministry as members of the church. And all baptized persons, including children, including you, are ministers of the church of Jesus Christ. Thomas, as a child, you have tremendous resources for ministry. After the pro-anaphora, the liturgy of the word, including the homily that puts everybody to sleep, your beautiful lungs and the beautiful lungs of other children provide the important ministry of awakement. That's right the ministry of awakement. You wake us up and bring us to our toes so that we can truly present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and awake and acceptable to God Almighty. Years ago, I was so worried about the ministry of awakement that my son Will was providing at Trinity Cathedral in Columbia. And I heard Dean Banks finally offer a great statement on the importance of children and their ministry to the body of Christ. He pointed out to the side aisles, to the narthex, to the space at the sides and the back, and he said, this is your space where parents can walk you when needed. In your ministry, you are a vital part of God's family, and yes, we do want to hear from you. He went on to affirm how important the sound of children is to the body of Christ, and pointing out that when you no longer hear the sounds of children in the parish church, it will not be long until it's time to turn out the lights not long before the doors are locked. Which brings me to my final point about your baptism and about your membership in the body of Christ. Thomas, the communion of all the saints is the name of your new Christian family, which means you have a large Christian family, Brothers like Francis who can teach you to love all creatures great and small and Benedict who can teach you about prayer and the baptismal life with sisters like Mary and Martha who will bless your curiosity and old Saint Paul who will teach you about sacramental grace with Mary the mother of our Lord who will assist your mother and your godmother and you with this difficult task of growing up and countless other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ who are even here today who will add their own touch of spice. Thomas, enjoy your baptism. Enjoy living forever in the body of Jesus Christ. Enjoy your new family. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.